In last month's show, we travelled to the Icelandic capital Reykjavik, located on the island's southwestern coast. As an increasingly popular tourist destination, the city is home to the National and Saga Museums, tracing Iceland's Viking history. On the outskirts of the city, we visited Landsmot, the country's largest equine competition, showcasing the country's best riders and horses. The history of the Icelandic horse is interwoven with the country's culture, and a strategic marketing plan called Horses of Iceland has been developed within the equine community. At Landsmot, we met Jelena Om, who manages this intriguing enterprise. So Horses of Iceland started in uh, 2015 when stakeholders in the Icelandic horse community got together and uh, wanted to combine forces to uh, give the horse a presence uh, into the outside world. And we got uh, funding from the Icelandic government. So what's unique about this project is that we both have the government and the entire industry uh, working together as a whole. Horses of Iceland bring you closer to nature is the marketing slogan used by the project, encompassing tourism and the importance of pure breeding. For the second part of our trip, Yelena was keen for us to meet two people who have close links with the venture. We drove around 130 kilometers out of Reykjavik to Kristalur, a breeding farm owned by Gunnar Studlusen, situated on the Snæfellsnes Peninsula in West Iceland. In 2003, I, I bought this farm and started breeding uh, horses here. Since uh, I'm from this area, I'm born and raised in Stikisrummur, which is only half an hour's drive from here. I just jumped when I saw this farm coming up for sale and uh, bought it. And I've been working on it ever since. Gunnar is a lawyer by profession and works in the capital, but his love of horses is equally important to him. The scenery around Cristola is stunning, but sadly for us, the rain and mist dropped in during our visit. Undeterred by the weather, Gunnar was willing to take us down to the nearby coast. That is probably the most uh, thrilling experience on a horseback. When you come down to the beach, the horses become so lively. There is uh, an endless gr flat ground in front of you. The sea is coming in and out. Uh, the, the horses become very energetic. And uh, the sand is as firm as uh, any oval track. So uh, it, it is so nice to, to ride and to ride fast. That's the thrill, that's the thing. Gunnar is also the president of Fife, the International Federation of Icelandic Horse Associations that's responsible for the sport and maintaining the purity of the breed worldwide. And global interest in the Icelandic horse leads to an important income for breeders. I think uh, we export out of Iceland around 1,500 horses per year. Uh, just to put this in, in, in perspective, there are around 240,000 Icelandic horses in the world. Out of that, we have around 100,000 horses here in Iceland. We have about 45,000 people being a member of uh, writing clubs for Icelandic horses around the world. So uh, this number of people calls for quite a lot of horses. So obviously we export some. You get a better price in general for a horse abroad than uh, here in, on the domestic market. Like many connected with the business, Gunnar is a strong believer in the Horses of Iceland project. They've done a very good job in, in promoting that through social media over the internet. So I think uh, more people are aware of the Icelandic horse now than they were before uh, the Horses of Iceland started. So this is a, an outstanding project in my opinion. I'm absolutely certain that uh, the Icelandic horse is probably uh, the best ambassador Iceland has. En route back to Reykjavik, around 17 kilometers north of Borgenes, we stayed at Hesteland, a horse farm run by Gudmar Pettersen. Hesteland is a, uh, kind of like an Icelandic horse center here in uh, the beautiful landscape in the west part of Iceland. Uh, we focus on horse tourism 
kind of with an educational twist. We do different kinds of tours. We do trail riding tours or educational tours. We like to prepare our people before we take them out in the open, or before we even put them on the horse. So that's kind of our speciality, I think you can say. There's no better way to see Aslan than on, from the top of a horse. You can, you can make it to places where a car wouldn't even get to. So it's a, it's a great way to see the, the landscape. But on the same time, it's important to feel good on the horse. It's important to be on a good horse and feel good and know enough what you're doing so you can then focus on enjoying, enjoying it. We have to make sure we have a huge or, 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 or a quite a big variety of horses. We need anything from the horse that literally anybody can ride. It just goes in a line and takes care of you. But then we also get quite a bit of good riders here. So we have to make sure we have horses that are, are very talented and, and, and can make those people happy too. Since 2010, the tourist industry in Iceland has been accelerating. And for many visitors, the Icelandic horse is a huge attraction. We have well over a million tourists here every year. So I think we have to do our best to promote the horse here the best we can. I think it's important when somebody comes to visit your home country and, and wants to see the uh, or experience the Icelandic course, we make that experience as good as possible and hopefully create more and more fans, you know. Goodmar's ethos is also in tune with the aims of the Horses of Iceland project. I think they've done extremely good things. It's obviously great to get the government involved, get all the um, organizations involved and I, I believe in the project, I'm a part of the project and I wish to be a bigger part of the project in the future and I think we need to unite behind it and, and, and make great things happen. Heartening words for Jelena and her colleagues back in Reykjavik who are looking to continue with this fascinating Horses of Iceland project for years to come.